Thanks, Iris. Hi, everyone. Jeff from the marketing team here. Uh, before we get started, I have to say I felt really nice to report in billions instead of millions for this quarterly review. <laughs> Okay, so I added the laugh track in for this video, but doing the actual presentation, that joke got quite a few chuckles because the audience found it to be very relatable. Which leads me to the first tip for presenting with confidence in the workplace, humor through relatability. To bring you all into the joke, a recent project milestone we hit was the $1 billion mark, and it was years in the making. We were all used to seeing revenue numbers reported in the millions, so referencing BN as a unit of measurement was a cheeky inside joke on my part. The good news? This strategy can literally be used by anyone, with the rule of thumb being, the more specific the reference, the more likely your humor will resonate with the attendees. To give an extreme example, let's assume a fresh graduate is giving a presentation with senior leaders in attendance. Hey everyone, although I just joined last week, even I know how extremely fun performance review season is for managers, so I'll keep this short and I'll try to let everyone go a few minutes early today. Here, that handsome new hire brought up a topic all employees can relate to regardless of title and tenure, earning him some quick brownie points right at the beginning of the presentation. By the way, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jeff. Come for the career tips and stay for the excessive amount of self-admiration. Moving on to workplace presentation tip number two, keep your slides clean. Da Vinci once said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And here it means the more visuals and text you cram into your slides, the more distracted your audience will be and the less likely they are to understand your key message. A great rule of thumb is to only include the primary points, which are the key takeaways that are short and memorable, as text on your slides and leave the secondary things like background and rationale in the oral part of your presentation. Here's a simple test I learned back in my management consulting days. If you share slides with a stranger and they're able to make sense of it by just clicking through the slides, there's too much information because the slides themselves should not make sense without you, the presenter. The one caveat to this rule, as Heinrich over at Firm Learning has nicely summarized, is business presentations created specifically for top level management that are meant to be standalone. But look at any popular TED talk over the past 10 years, and you'll see that the speaker's slides rarely make sense without the speakers themselves. By the way, this video is more about the soft skills required to present confidently in the workplace. So let me know if you'd like me to share some hard tips. <laughs> hard tips, hard presentation skills, like how to structure slides and write action-oriented titles, stuff like that. Tip three is to assume something I call lowest common language. Let's see a quick example. In particular, I like to point everyone's attention to the second step here, because it's really thanks to the analyst team that we were able to filter out 90% of irrelevant leads, resulting in a much higher conversion rate. Let's pause right there. You, watching, probably understood the point I was trying to make, even with no context, because I specifically said the analyst team instead of the acronym DMS, and I mentioned the implication of this step, we're able to filter out irrelevant leads instead of repeating the technical phrase, scrubbing process efficiency. This intentional use of wording is important because if there are any meeting participants unfamiliar with your specific terminology, you just fail to get your message across because no one wants to look stupid and ask what you meant. It's like if you imagine concentric circles, you can use acronyms and specific technical phrases in your core working group, but when you're presenting to a larger audience, you wanna use language everyone definitely understands. We hear about effective communication skills all the time, and I would argue this is a concrete example of that. In order to convey our message effectively to everyone in the room, we should always assume the lowest common language. For number four, I put together a few presentation etiquette tips and tricks. First, dial in three to five minutes before the presentation is scheduled to begin and present your screen. This helps you avoid any technical surprises and the extremely frustrating Oh, uh, is everyone here? Should I should I should I start presenting? Okay. Um, no, not this one. Uh, this one. Okay. Cool. 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 We can we can finally get started. All right. Um, can everyone see my screen? Can everyone see it? No. Second, since people are usually still dialing in during the first five minutes, prepare a holding slide to set clear expectations on when you will start speaking and stick to it. Third, engage intentionally. More interactive elements do not automatically mean 
a better experience. It's best to only include a poll, quiz, or game if it can help elevate your message or help convey your key points in an even better way. I've left the most boring tip for last, but in my personal opinion, it's the most important, and that is to practice, practice, and practice again. According to Harvard Business Review, we should treat business presentations like a performance and rehearse out loud. Melodramatic exaggeration aside, this is solid advice because it's only when we say our lines out loud, we know when to pause and when to speed up the pace to make a point. HBR also mentions each slide should take between 30 to 60 seconds to present so the audience is engaged with fresh new visual content. For me, I usually take between one and one and a half minutes per slide, but I think the key takeaway here is to actually time yourself when you're practicing. And of course, gotta end with a very practical tip, and that is, if you click the drop down arrow next to Slideshow in Google Slides, you can choose Presenter View, allowing your speaker notes to appear in a separate window, and you can then press L to enable the laser pointer. If you enjoyed this How to Present with Confidence video, you might wanna check out my data storytelling tips next. See you on the next video. In the meantime, have a great one.